Okay, welcome back. This is part two of the series on color grading. And today I'm going to talk about inspiration and what to expect and how to be able to grasp a little bit better um, what to think when you decided on a color grading route. Okay, the entire photographic process is like a pyramid. Most people only see most consumers only see the very top of that pyramid, you know, will only see that. They only see the final product. The, the problem is that the top of that pyramid is supported by everything else that is below it. So before you start banging your head on the desk and cursing at everyone because you cannot get a certain mood, a certain tone, a certain color right, and, and you see the image that you want to see, but you can't replicate it. Let's talk about everything else that gets involved in this process, because it's important to understand. Pretty much anything that you see in the image plays a part in how the final retouch is going to look, especially with the color grading, the location, the styling, the wardrobe choices. If it's on location, then the time of day. If it's indoors, the light quality the light source, the position of the light, the contrast that it has, all of those play a part into what the final process is going to look like. So whatever comes in will have an impact on what is going to come out of Photoshop. And some people speak of this, some other retouches that I heard talk about this, they speak of this in terms of well, if you have a bad photo coming in, a bad photo is going to come out. And that is true in general terms. But even more than that, if, let's call it worse than that, it doesn't even have to be a bad photo. It only needs to be the wrong type of photo. Or not the wrong type of photo, but a different type of photo. If you're trying to emulate this look, you're not going to get this look by standing outside with jeans and a t-shirt at two o'clock in the afternoon in the Texas weather. You're just not. Now you might be able to get pretty good photos and maybe even amazing photos at two o'clock in the afternoon in Texas weather with jeans and a t-shirt, but you will not get this look. All right, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about a little bit of color theory. So we have this color wheel and this is from the uh, Adobe color website. And I recommend you to use because it's it's interactive. We have several schools of thought when it comes to color theory. And color theory is just the harmony that colors have towards one another. We have this color that it's the rainbow that goes from not saturated to completely saturated. And, and from one end of the spectrum to the other, all in a circle, in a wheel. All right. And we have several ways of thinking about this. Uh, the one that it can selected, it's analogous. These are colors that are next to one another in the color wheel that, that play well together. All right. So here we have for going from purple to red, going from red to orange, from yellow to green, from blue, from green to blue, from blue to purple, and so on. Okay. Now we have monochromatic. These are different shades and different um, levels of, of luminosity without changing the hue. Just one color at, at different levels of light intensity, right? That's monochromatic. Then we have the triad, which is, you know, basically you split the, uh, the wheel into three equal parts and you get sort of like a, I think this also they call it split complementary. What? We have one opposite and the other opposite is splitting two. Then we have the complementary, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's just colors on the opposite side of the wheel. And if you think about, for example, you see this a lot in movie posters, in movies in general, in, um, in post-production of, of the movies. And in uh, sports, you see this a lot in team colors, in um, whatever sports you watch just pay attention to that and you will probably see it the mains that we're going to use for our purposes are complementary 
uh, probably monochromatic and analogous. And what is cool about this uh, tool from Adobe is that you can import an image and it will kind of like select the different areas of color and it will give you the the co the basic the color palette that that was applied to that photo. So we have that photo that I had just opened right here. And we can see some in the darkness, some in the highlights and some in the midtones and you can tell that this is what we were going with the first uh, sample which is analogous, you know, colors that are similar that are next to one another in the color wheel. So we have some greenish and then some brownish colors going in here. And um, this is how these colors harmonize together. So if you if you looking at an image and you want to have this kind of mood, now you know what kind of colors or how you're going to be to be applying those uh, techniques that we learned in step one and that we're going to apply in step three. Now, now I have another example. This is more monochromatic, okay? And so we can see different shades pretty much of the same blue tone. And uh, don't keep ign ignoring the what I was just talking about a few minutes ago. The lighting, it's it's moody. It, it, this was probably shot at a studio, to be honest, but it was said to look like this really cloudy, dark day. The color in Angelina Jolie's coat, it is not black by accident. It's, it's not an accident that this color is not purple or green. You know, it, it is here for a reason and it complements the colors of the image. So kind of going back a little bit to what I was speaking about a few minutes earlier. So you see, this is a little bit more monochromatic. Everything is almost pretty much the same tone with different, different shades of it. We have this one, this is more complementary. This is one of those famous Gucci ads. And here we have cool tones in the background, warm tones in the foreground. These are opposite to one another in the, in the color wheel. So we can see it right there. Pay attention to this kind of stuff. If you say you want this kind of look, okay, you, you're gonna be thinking about this kind of complementary color tones, both during pre-production, production, and post-production. All right. so. Let's go into Photoshop and I'll show you a few tools that you can use to also evaluate colors. Of course, you have the eyedropper tool and you can just um, open up the eyedropper dialog. It will either be the info dialog. It will either be in here. Most likely by default is not going to appear in the main window. You just go to window and then you have find info and it will pop up. And just by hovering it, you will be able to see what color is more intense because obviously this is blue, but sometimes it's going to be, well, is it more blue than green? Is it more green than blue? This is literally 0% red and then 60, oh, I don't want to say percent, but it has zero levels of, of, of red from zero to 256. And it's uh, 63 green, 88 blue. So it's towards the blue side with a little bit of, with a hint of green, no red. And then we can start reading here. It has, Pretty much green and blue are almost the same. Blue is in the lower end and red dominates. So you can just use the eyedropper tool to kind of like browse around and see what you know so that you can get an idea of what you want. Sometimes it's not that obvious. In this case, it's pretty obvious. Let's use some adjustment layers to be able to read more info into the image. One simple way of doing it is let's create a new blank layer. I'm just going to go here. Click right here in the layers panel to create a new empty layer. I'm going to fill this image. I'm going to go image. Uh, what is it? No, edit, fill. I'm going to fill it with 50% gray. I'm going to change this blending mode to luminosity. Now this uh, pretty much got rid of all of, ev made just reduce it to just basic shapes. And so that the, co but the color leaked through an otherwise map without any kind of luminosity. So we, we got rid of the, of the high and low luminosity values and let the color bleed through it. And this is what we end up to. No, I'm not going to use this for any kind of the photographic process as well. This is just a way of, of looking at the, at the colors on a, on a basic level. So you see, for example, in here, it's hard to see at first glance that there's actually a, a tone in the shadows. But now that I have this turned on, we can see that there is a, 
what is it, a blue kind of cast in the shadows. We can see red is 122, green is 125, It's ba they're basically the same, and blue is 160. So in the shadows, they added blue to the shadows. Now we're able to see it better. We can see the basic color wheel theory. We can see the, the, the warm tones, and we can see the cold tones in the background. So that's one way of creating the image. Another way is by saturation. So we create a new selective color layer and we're going to go to every color channel. We're going to reduce the black level to minus 100%. Every one of these. And you can record this as an action just so you don't have to do it every time. I actually have it as an action. I'm just showing you how to do it. So, so red, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, and magentas. They all, we all set them to negative 100% on the black. And then the whites, the neutrals, and the blacks to plus 100%. This is what we call a saturation map, where the brightest area is the one that is more saturated and the darkest area is less saturated. So we can see right here, for example, this area here is bright in its context of this image but it's not as saturated. So they, they've been playing with the saturation, I think selectively in some of these areas to emphasize the, you, you know, the models and, and, the, and, and to create a little bit of contrast. So we can see how um, the sky is super saturated. It's not only bright, it's saturated. You can see her, her skin tone is kind of like in the middle of the saturation. It's kind of like a little bit saturated, kind of like normal saturation, and then the, the shadows are almost completely desaturated. All right, so that is another way of, different ways of reading the images, just so that you can get an idea of what you are, of knowing what to do with the inspirational photos that you're grabbing. But again, for example, to get this look, you need a high contrast light source. They probably use a, a neutral density filter or a, um, a graduated filter to make the sky dark while being able to use the, the flash at a high power and to enhance more of that contrast. All of those things matter. The clothes, they are on the same tones as, as everything in the foreground. You can use all that information to read into the photos that you're grabbing from inspiration and being able to assess more what you want, either if you're the photographer and want to emulate the look, and if you're if you're working with your retouchers or if you're the retoucher to know what what it's you know what's in the image. Alright, so this was a simple video. On the next one we're gonna dive really into it and we're going to work on our image that I showed you in the first video. See you then.